Hello, today I'm going to show you my data on user iColor from OpenSNP. Uh, this data consists of 522 uh, individual files. Who It is individuals who uploaded their data files to OpenSNP for people like me to study them and make conclusions. So let's see. This is basically all the iColors that I've collected. There is three folders for blue iColors. Uh, two folders for blue with an a amber or yellow pigment, uh, two folders for brown, one folder for dark brown, two folders for green, and three folders for hazel eyes. I will quickly show you the contents of these folders. Right. We'll quickly show you the contents of these folders. It is in total, it is 522, 522 people in total that I've looked at. Right, so it took me about a day. No, it took me two days. It took me two days to compute all this data, to uh, analyze all of it. And today I will show you the results of this analysis. Okay, so this is all the data. Um, here is a spreadsheet with all the user data. It looked, I looked at uh, 22 different variations. 22 different variations and I will show you the number of the files. It's a pretty big number Five hundred and twenty two this is how many files there are in my database So now let's analyze it. This, this is the full database with 522 files What? can we notice here? We can notice here that the most predictive SNP is this one. Uh, it is the known blue eye haplotype or whatever. Uh, HERC2, this is the SNP that uh, 23andMe looks at to determine eye color. So you see the frequency of the G allele for a dark brown population would be 15. It's a very low frequency. But for blue population, it's 99. 99%. Very interesting. This makes uh, mis this makes up the majority. This explains the majority of the difference between eye colors. Uh, let's look at TIRP1. Here we see that within the dark brown population, uh, C is the dark allele here and T is the dark allele here. The dark alleles uh, prevail over the light alleles, whereas for the blue population, the light alleles are at a pretty low frequency. What's interesting is the population blue with an amber center the light alleles, the dark alleles for the TIRP1 are much, are almost at the same frequency as the blue population. So we can conclude at least within uh, this, that within uh, this uh, database, uh, people who have a uh, amber center and blue eyes, it is not because of a uh, relative to blue eyes, it is, the difference is not in the TIRP1 gene. Uh, within the green eyes, we can see that the frequency of the dark alleles within this gene are higher. Than the, than the frequencies in the blue uh, in the blue population. However, they are lower than the dark brown eye population and the brown eye population, and even the hazel eye population. So it is stupid to say, it would be incorrect to say that uh, TIRP1, the TIRP1 gene predicts green eyes over blue. Because with the same, in the, the same way it predicts green eyes over blue, it also predicts hazel eyes over green, brown eyes over hazel and dark brown eyes over brown so it is just a spectrum from blue to dark brown it is not uh, some kind of a gene that gives you green eyes right this needs to be understood so let's look at uh, this one this is tirp uh, this is tir here we see a big difference between the blue and the green population uh, even even greater difference than between blue and dark brown which is interesting however i think this is because of a sampling error if we compare 
uh, this allele within the tier gene, we see that there is a difference between blue and green, but the difference between blue and dark brown is greater. So this is, I think, more telling. This is a more telling SNP. Uh, when it comes to SLC24A4, uh, what, what conclusions can we make, right? Uh, the dark allele here is the G allele. It is around half of blue eye population. And it is much higher in blue with an amber center and green than it is within the within the blue eye population. What's interesting is that within the blue with an amber center population, it's at the same frequency as within the dark brown eye population. That's very interesting. Uh, so this, this can tell us that the amber color in the center, blue eyes that have an amber color in the center, uh, it is partially because of the SLC24A4 gene. That's what this tells us. Uh, this SNP with an SLC24A4 gene, the blue eyes with an amber center population actually has the highest frequency of this out of all groups, uh, the dark allele, the G allele. Um, that's very interesting. What can you say? So this also SLC24A4. Um, everything looks pretty similar. Uh, I, I, I gotta say, everything looks pretty similar. The dark allele, the A allele is most common within the dark brown population. And the least common among, uh, the I think, I think the hazel population. And then the blue. And after that, it's... It's hazel, then blue, then blue with an amber center, then green, then brown, then dark brown, right? Uh, so this, another interesting gene, another interesting variation within the OCA2 gene. SNPedia says that the T allele here corresponds with uh, brown or hazel eyes, but my data shows this to be absolutely false. The T allele leads to a lighter eye color. The reason it it is the T allele is highest in the hazel category is because the T allele in this OCA2 gene comes together with the A allele in this gene, highlighted here, uh, the most predictive uh, variation out of the one studied. So because it comes together with the A allele here, uh, it comes together with a darker eye color. So if you compare people w of uh, European ancestry, uh, you will see that people who have a T allele in the highlighted area would have darker eyes than the people without it. However, if you compare worldwide, you will see that the people with the T allele here will have lighter eyes than people without it. And this this is supported by my data because you can see 3% of people with dark brown eyes have this uh, T allele here, whereas 10% of people with hazel eyes. So it predicts hazel eyes over dark brown. It does not predict hazel eyes relative to blue, it predicts hazel eyes relative to dark brown. It can lighten a dark brown eye color into hazel or green or even blue, as we can see here. So this is the point I wanted to make regarding this gene. Um, so one thing that is interesting that I wanted to study and look at here is the, the function of the TIR and the TIRP1 gene and the function of the SLC24A4 gene in regards to differentiating blue eyes from green and blue eyes from blue eyes with a neighbor center. But I cannot do this accurately from the data that I show you here, and here is why. Uh, let's look at the area that I just highlighted. You see that the G allele frequency for the blue eye population here is 99. So pretty much everybody, almost everybody within the blue eye population has a GG uh, genotype here. But for green, it is 90, and for blue with an amber center, it is 87. That means that some of these people who have... Uh, there's different ways to get uh, blue with an amber center as the result of your eye color. You can have AG within this uh, allele, within this SNP, but because you have, for example, uh, CT or TT within this SNP, you get blue eyes with an amber center because uh, this is IRF4. I forgot to mention this. The T allele here causes lighter eye color. We can see the, the difference between this, for example, and this. We see the T allele here causes light eye color. And I predict that if I get rid of all the AG uh, genotype people within this SNP, I will see a very different percentage here, and I will see a very different percentage here, and I will see a very different percentage here for the blue amber center group and the green group. So let's see what I will see after I remove all the AG people within this, SN within this SNP from blue amber center and the green group. Let's go. 
so here it is i've done it uh this is now 487 people yes the the population size has decreased because i did had to delete uh, 30 people or so but it's for the better because now we're gonna get uh we're gonna be able to make conclusions about tier one tier and slc 44 2484 so now you see let's look at this s p 100 gg for green group 100 gg for blue with a neighbor center group so i got rid of all the ag people from here is what i'm saying i left only the gg people so that it is comparable to the blue eye group first let's look at tier one uh we see within uh, this is np the blue with the neighbor center has a roughly the same frequency as the blue group so tier one is not what makes blue eyes into blue eyes with a neighbor center however the green group has a much higher frequency of the T allele, so it is a part of uh, it is a part of something that contributes to green eyes. But once again, it's not a green eye gene by any mean, by any means by any stretch of the imagination, because it is more predictive of dark brown eye color. For example, my genotype TT it is much more predictive of dark brown eye color than it is of green. However, it is more predictive of green eye color than it is of blue. So once again, it's a spectrum from green to dark from blue to dark brown. And the green just happens to lay on that spectrum. Uh, within this allele of the tier 1 gene, we also see... But here it's interesting, because here we see that the, the blue with the neighbor center group has a slightly higher frequency of the dark allele than the green group. So this is interesting. Within the tier gene, let's look at this uh, variation. Uh, the green group has a much higher frequency of the dark allele, the G allele, than the blue group. Uh, it is actually a 12% difference, which is great. It's a big difference. Uh, if we compare the blue with the neighbor center to blue, uh, the G allele is higher within the blue neighbor center group, but only by 8%, which is actually, it's also a pretty big difference, but it's not as significant as the, as the difference between green and blue. Mm. Let's look at this SNP within the tier gene. Here we see that the green population, once again, has a much higher frequency of the G allele than the blue population and the blue with the neighbor center has a slightly higher than the blue population but lower than the green population so what we can uh, deduct from this is that the tier 1 and the tier uh, genes are what really separates the green eyes from the blue eyes what we can deduct from this now let's look at SLC 24A4 Within the SLC24A4, so for example here, with the G allele is the dark allele, and we see something very interesting. We see that the blue with an amber center group has a higher G allele frequency than the dark brown group. That's very interesting. So that means that the G allele, that the dark allele within uh, this region of the SLC24A4 is predictive of blue eyes with an amber center relative to blue eyes. It is a difference of uh, 47 minus 69 that's like man that's like 22 percent difference it's a big difference so if we compare this one this is also slc 2044 the dark allele here is the g and within the blue eye group it's 19 percent but within the blue with the neighbor center group it's 31 percent which is higher than any other group once again we can see that the g allele within uh, within this SNP is very much predictive of uh, the amber center relative to blue eyes, relative to just blue eyes. Here, within this SNP of the SLC 24A4 gene, we see the same pattern. But here, the blue amber center is kind of similar to green. Um, it's kind of similar also to brown. And the dark brown population has the highest frequency of the dark allele, the A allele. So, yeah, this is the conclusion you can draw from this. The conclusion is that if you want to determine blue eyes versus blue eyes with an amber center, you would look at these two SNPs. And if you want to determine blue eyes versus green eyes, you would look at these four SNPs.